Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Woki and I'm here with Zenra. Hello. And welcome to the only show dedicated to... I completely fucked up the intro of this because we have not done it in a week and I started doing Japuni Heroes. <laughs> I was about to say, that doesn't sound right. That <laughs> no, like god Japuni's damn it. One. <laughs> That's the Japuni intro. <laughs> this is a show in which me and Zen have dedicated the act of watching every single Shonen Jump anime in existence that can be found, that is, and can be found. That's very important because we're not going to be able to see... If we can find JoJo, the JoJo movie that is lost, we will watch it, but we literally can't watch that because it's lost. But we will watch Watch anything that is possible. Oh, I want to watch that though. I want it so bad. Oh, I want it so bad too. I've the never wanted that... something so bad in my life. <laughs> You'll never see a faster episode go up for when that ep- when that lost movie gets found. Because <laughs> we will both already be ready to talk about it. But we will go through everything shown in jump until one of us goes down or the universe itself collapses. And today we're here to talk about uh, until Gintama. One of us goes down. Just <laughs> yeah, collapse. One of us... You have one of us gets taken heap. down. <laughs> it's gonna happen eventually. I don't plan to be. I, I'm, I'm here for a, a good time, not a long time. Zen. <laughs> That's how I'm. <laughs> and speaking of a good time and long time, we're gonna talk about episodes. Oh god, it has been a very long time. We're gonna talk about episodes 62, 63, 64, and 65. And also, if you were curious, some, something came up. That's why we weren't able to record last week. <laughs> but we're here now, so yes. we're all good. We're yes. back. We're back, back at it. So let's get right into it, Zen. Tell us about what happens in episode 62. The one who bite, who gets bitten instead, literally meaning the mummy hunter becomes a mummy, which I think in the currency roll thing, they call it even mummy hunters sometimes turn into mummies. Yes. It's a very specific uh, note here. Yes. Um, so it starts off with like a little summary sort of of the Benizakura arc and everything that went on in that, like a, like a clip yeah. show almost sort of our, our third time experiencing the Benizakura yes. arc. <laughs> <laughs> Not our last time, given no, how often we're we gonna, have to, to see that. I'm sure we'll see it more. Yeah. We have to talk about the live action movie at some point and talk about this arc again. Yes. But... A live action movie that is also the Benizakura <laughs> arc. <laughs> yes. Continue. Um, yeah, so it starts off with like a little clip show of just like highlights from the Benny Zakara stuff, um, and then we cut to like a cafe where Toshiro is asking uh, Yamazaki to give him like a report on what happened, and so it flashes back to him trying to gather information about that report, and he's told that if he has to, he should kill Gintoki. Um, he kind of interviews everyone from like the series so far. Uh, like a ton of people make yeah, they, like show back up again. Yeah. Like the the guy who changed his face and his identity to run the nightclub comes back. It's like a it's like a uh, it's like a little montage a big, of dudes we've seen. What's the word I'm trying to say? It's like an all star like cast <laughs> reunion. Yeah. Like everyone from all the shit they've been doing. Oh yeah, it's like back. when uh, the SNL thing did their 50 years. Everyone comes back over the past 61 episodes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's just like that. Um, mm. And then eventually he decides to look, uh, like, in Gintoki's place um, to try to find him. And it turns out he's staying at Shimpachi's because he's hurt. And it's more of uh, Ote trying to keep him from, like, exerting himself. Um, and it's just a bunch of fucking shenanigans go on as he tries to find out. And then as he leaves, because he, he narrowly escapes with his life as they're trying to, like, perpetrate comedic slapstick violence, um, he bumps into the swordsmith sister. Uh, and has, she asks to give Kintoki a message that, um, despite everything that she's been through, she's okay now. And she's grateful for everything that Kintoki did to get her there. Um and they have like a little heartwarming moment where Yamazaki's like, no, I don't think that uh, he's a threat at all. I think he only got involved because he wanted to see her smile. And then there's a really good joke at the end where Toshiro is irritated because he basically wrote like a poem out of it instead of writing a real <laughs> report. Yeah, which is pretty good. <laughs> also, I want to point out in the beginning, it begins with a Prince of Tennis joke. Yeah, I've made a note where, of it here. Yeah. He's playing badminton on the beach, and he's wearing the Prince of Tennis's like uniform, the uniform of his school, mm-hmm. and he's also wearing his hat. Um, 
and the characters who are on the sideline are the actual Prince of Tennis characters. Those are the characters from the Prince of Tennis Wait, really? that are watching him play. <laughs> yes, those are the actual characters <laughs> from his school that are on the sideline watching him play. Wow, that's pretty good. And the the cut the phrase that he says, the you've got a long way to go, that is uh Ryoma's catchphrase. Wow, really? Yes, that's, that's pretty, the was... catchphrase that uh that Ryoma always says whenever he wins a game in the Prince hoping... of Tennis. He says you've got a long way to go. I was hoping you were gonna be able to pick up on that because I have not seen anything of Prince of Tennis. Uh, so I was hoping Prince that this goes super hard. But yeah, those are the actual like though I, I that you only see them for a minute. So I couldn't tell for sure if they were like parodies of people dressed up like them or actually just them. But in the little bit that I saw, it just straight up looked like it was them. Oh, it's kind of like, it, it's kind of like when that dude from Gundam shows up and I was like, that's clearly the guy from Gundam. They only changed the slightest thing <laughs> to make it. So it wouldn't be technically the same character. It's like one of those where it's like, clearly that is them. Okay. Yeah, no, I looked the picture up. Um, that's literally them. Okay. <laughs> it's it's hang on. I I have a picture that's actually showing all of them. Um Let me send this to you just so you can see it cuz it's really fucking funny. Wow, holy shit. It's literally <laughs> <laughs> It says them. <laughs> Damn. Oh, it's so fucking funny. That's good. That's a nice psyche. They're only there for like the tiniest of it. <laughs> for like two seconds, yeah. And then whenever, because he keeps coming back to this beach and he's playing badminton again and again. Um, and they're never there again after that. It's always just like different people that just wearing the uniforms. It's not like the actual characters again. But it was really funny seeing them all pop up. Also, the badminton joke is really good where he keeps getting hit by stuff. Because uh, the first time he gets hit by like the birdies, when yeah. he's sitting on the sideline because he's not paying attention. And the second time he gets hit by the actual rackets, which I already thought was funny. And then the third time he says, not this time. And he pulls his <laughs> racket up to protect his face. And it's a fucking horse. That When that horse came out of nowhere, then they started doing all, <laughs> run away horse. And he's like in the back going, <laughs> and he walks away. I fucking died laughing. So fucking uh, funny. The so horse comes out of nowhere. fucking funny. It reminds me of that joke <laughs> from uh, from Kung Pao when they're like, "We're falling, we're falling, way!" <laughs> Just like what? Just... I think it's funny. It was a really good. Guy. It was a really good guy. Uh, it was really fucking funny. Uh, yeah. So for this episode, because I have some notes here, there was another gag that I actually liked. There was a part where, um, because Gintoki is supposed to be relaxing. Uh, Kagura starts reading to him Shonen Jump, but she starts reading from like fr- she, she starts doing Frieza's lines, but then she starts making like the the noises she's from reading Dragon the Ball. sound effects. Yeah, so she goes yeah. Doka, Bishi, Bashi, Bushi, Kufu, Doon. Yeah, she's reading all of like the the battle sound effects, which I thought was really good. I thought that was funny. Just the idea of someone reading someone Shonen Jump and trying to read it like a book, and then just <laughs> reading out the sound effects out loud was good. Um, then I think the other one she reads, cause she ends up, he says like, I forget, he like starts complaining about like, you're not doing it right. And then she starts reading something else. And I think the other one is strawberry a hundred percent or it's like it's some strawberry kind of... 100%. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought that was funny. I thought that was good. Uh, I also did like that when he's inside there, you learned that the house has been fortified specifically because there's been a stalker, uh, an increase of, of stalkers because of Kondo. <laughs> and then Kondo shows him like, I put down the notes literally, um, when I originally put down the notes, I put down due to Kondo, the dojo is now crazy fortified. And then Sachan showed up and I had to amend it and go due to Kondo and Sachan. <laughs> The dojo is crazy fortified now because I completely forgot that she is also uh, a stalker and they also have like a stalker talk down basically how they they talk shit yeah, about each other's stalk yeah a stalker <laughs> off uh, about each other's like attitudes towards it which was really funny I also liked the gag when um because th- they put a bunch of like holes everywhere like pitfalls and the final yes, pitfall with bamboo spikes in them yes in the final pitfall gintoki falls into one and there's like a super slow motion as like there's like f- all four characters kondo sachan kagura and atose all come after each other no, uh, not, not atose my bad um 
come after each other and it's like a super slow motion like no as you realize he's gonna get put in for the spikes <laughs> which I yeah like. because the, the reason they all fall in is because they get uh they're they're all chasing after him Hondo's chasing after him to kill him Sachan's chasing after him to protect him and then Kagura and uh Ote are chasing after him to put him back to bed yes. and they all like leap to attack him and end up hitting each other Yes, which was very good. And then there's also an end credits reveal where it shows that he's actually worse off. Yeah, he's more injured now than he yeah. was before. Yeah, which was pretty good. So this was a... Uh, let me see, is there anything else? This run. Oh, there also is a brief bit where um, they go to Otsu. I just wanted to put it down because she actually had some good ones. She has the verbal tick thing. I just made a note of some of them where she says at the end, which is Thunderdome... Uh, fatal blunt force trauma death note and big magnum i just thought those were pretty funny <laughs> the funny funny ways to end the sentence so i wrote them down <laughs> that and i'm a big fan of the movie thunderdome so i had to make a reference to that so yeah i thought this uh episode ended up being pretty good it was like a good like end off to the previous arc we should have probably watched it with it now that i've seen it <laughs> yeah because it was sort of like the a little like filler not not filler like a uh, summary kind of thing yeah like a, of... like a book in which kind of closes it off yeah which was nice um it would have been a good way actually i'm curious to see if we would have yeah no it still would have worked out because it would it still had enough ties into it for it to be like a cool off um but yeah i thought it was good it was a good funny time good old time good way to also start off the episode i like it when an episode is just like oh this is just enjoyable to watch a good, nice watch, because some good gags. So I liked it. How'd you feel about it? It was good. I really liked the episode. Um, it was a nice little roundup. I like uh, the Prince of Tennis shit, obviously. I like the... Um, I like Yamazaki in general. I just find him <laughs> funny. I don't know why. Um, yeah, I also find Yamazaki pretty funny. I don't know how it happened, <laughs> but he ends yeah, up being... Yeah, he, <laughs> he ends up being funny. I yeah. thought the bit where... Um, he is peeking up through the thing and they spill the burnt fried egg portage into his eyes. It was really <laughs> fucking funny. That was good. He's like screaming that it's a chemical weapon attack as he's running away. Um, and then I also liked how um, Shimpachi was totally not into this episode at all. He was no, he... like bored as shit. Like, all right. And he's like clicking buttons and like shooting <laughs> satellite beams. But the yeah, whole time he's like, uh-huh. uh, yeah, yeah. My favorite part is at the end he's like, "I thought we were supposed to." What happened to restoring the dojo to its true honor or something? <laughs> like he was questioning. Yeah. All like, the what addition- happened to restoring the house? <laughs> it's like a <laughs> fortress. That was really good. I also forgot, but there was a lot of stuff with the... I also like the stalker interaction a whole bunch. There was some specific things said. I think that was specifically talking about talking back to the baby that um, they were teamed up with. Um, where she's like, I was willing to accept him when I thought he had another child. You're not on my level, basically, is what she was saying about their difference in stalkering. Yeah, well, she also said that he's not uh, masochistic enough. Oh, that's right. Was very and then good Kondo keeps saying that he he's in fact not a stalker; he's a hunter of love. <laughs> and uh, Yamazaki's like, that is a, literally what a stalker is. Yeah, he's like, I'm not a stalker. I'm just someone who has trouble with love. <laughs> I'm just someone with love <laughs> troubles. <laughs> so good stuff. And that was episode sixty-two. Let's move on to the next one. Episode 63, which is called Jump's preview for the next issue is not accurate, which is the preview of section in Jump is always unreliable for for Crunchyroll. Go ahead and tell us what it's about, Zen. So this one is a Zenzo episode uh, where he kind of gives a little monologue about how like um, samurai are dogs and ninjas are cats because ninjas will follow anyone who feeds them, basically. Mm. Um, he's trying to deliver a pizza, and Gintoki rams into him on his bike, and he ends up losing his pizza, because he ends up taking a shonen jump to the house he's supposed to be delivering it to instead. Um, a little girl there ends up taking the jump from him, and he goes to get the pizza and brings it back. And it turns out that she is, like, this little clairvoyant girl, 
um, that he's just been hired to kidnap, essentially. And so they kind of bond a little bit because he brings her another copy of Jump. And they eat a pizza and talk about it. And then uh, our guys get hired to be her bodyguard. And they're comically bad at it, as expected. Um, Over. And then the... the Yeah, they, <laughs> they're, uh, like, secret agenting it. Like, like the Secret Service. Yeah. Um, they do... Eventually, the, the evil group, like, attacks. And Zenzo is there to kidnap her, but he ends up uh, betraying them to protect her. And he does save her at the last minute. While Gintoki and crew fight off like the the goons, the the goon squad that is after her, um, and that's basically it. He has like a little moment where Gintoki sees him run away, and he's like, "Ah, it's you, ah, respect," and that's kind of where it is. Um, this episode ended up being. It's funny because this episode starts off so seriously with him giving this diatribe about the differences between samurais and ninjas, just to have the reveal that he is a pizza delivery man, <laughs> and that they he immediately gets yes. hit on. <laughs> he immediately gets hit on the ass, and he starts talking about his hemorrhoids, which is not. I forget. Did did he suffer from this previous times? I don't remember. Yes. Uh, if you remember the one where they were all ninjas, um. And they were going to save the fake Elizabeth from the nobleman. Yes. He had hemorrhoids there as well. Okay, okay. Um, so yeah, it starts off with that. I think it's really funny that no matter what, his inner preview is always super serious, no matter what's happening. <laughs> he always keeps yes. it very... His monologue is very good, and I think it actually goes with the episode very well, especially by the end of it. I kind of like that this is more stuff... I. I always put in my notes he's the jump ninja because he always comes up with a whole bunch of shonen. Jo- Whenever he shows up, there's always a buttload of shonen jump jokes. One of my favorite is that the girl who is clairvoyant, she's unable to tell what will happen next in shonen jump, so she didn't know. Yeah, that that's one- like the only thing that uh, her powers can't see is what what happens next in shonen jump. Yes, which was really good when she was like, I didn't foresee this, that they would end uh, My Son to Penguin, which is an actual manga that was serializing, which I made the joke of a, a girl who could see the future cannot actually see when Shonen Jump will act a series. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was good. And also liked his bonding with her in general, where he's talking about, oh yeah, read the jump, and they have pizza, and then she says, like, please bring me a... Uh, shoujo manga. She says that I'm not allowed yeah, to read shoujo. Yeah, manga. Yeah, because it's too adults, <laughs> so I only have to read a jump. Basically, it's the only thing age appropriate enough for me. And I did like by the end of it, he did actually. The thing that saves him is that he did come back with a shoujo manga, but it gets destroyed. Yeah, because he gets he gets stabbed. Uh, but the manga stops him from getting cut, which is really funny because we just had two people survive getting slashed thanks to books at the end of the Benny Zakura stuff. Yes. It's funny too. <laughs> two very important books then. One filled with manga and the other one filled with childhood dreams <laughs> or childhood memories. Two very powerful um books for sure. Um but yeah, I like that. I like their relationship and stuff like that. Also like the kind of talking with him about specifically about how Oh man, I w- again, I saw this episode like a, a, a week ago, so some of the memories are a little bit so to kind of help me with this. But they were basically talking about like how the future isn't necessarily set in stone. Like she, the reason that this little girl seems so defeated and everything is that she already knows what everything's going to happen, good and bad. So she doesn't really see a point in. I guess living is the right. Like if to her, it's not living. It's kind of like just going through the motions. And I think through. Uh, both Zenzo and Gintoki, she can finally see that just because there's a way that things are supposed to be doesn't mean that it has to be that way by both Zenzo changing his future that he saw there, that what she saw, and then just in general talking. I liked all that stuff. I thought that stuff was good. Um, and then I also liked it when Gintoki's crew showed up because they were just here for, because all the emotional stuff was basically being lifted by Zenzo here. All they could do was just make the dumb jokes and do the goofy things, which were, which was good for me. 
Um, I'm a big fan of the over joke in any language. When you do a secret spy stuff and you go over, I think it's the fucking funniest thing in the world. I think comedy was perfected whenever someone realized it's really funny to be on walkie talkie and end every sentence with over. I don't know why this gets me, but it literally gets me in any media. If you show this to me, I will always be down for it. <laughs> so I enjoyed all that stuff. I also enjoyed when she talked about how uh, they asked her, like, if you can see into the future, um, tell us what's going to happen next or something. And then it ended up being Shinpachi getting hit. And she's like, literally, the only reason I got hit is because you pointed at it and then you just did it yourself or something like that. Yeah, she says, watch your head and Kagura punches immediately. <laughs> punches it immediately, which was good. And then she also mentions that when he asks, he's like, hey, when are we going to get into a buttload of money? She's like, pretty soon. And then they get the money for, <laughs> for guarding Yeah, her. they get the money handed to them. Yeah, which was good. Uh, let me see the last bit of my notes here. Uh, yeah, and then I think I, this was the first ninja episode that had zero Naruto references. Not a single one of them that I could That's find. That's true. In. There's not a single Naruto reference in that no. one. I, I made I sure. hadn't crossed my mind at that point, but yeah, that is true, isn't it? No, I waited the entire episode saying, what, what kind of Hamaru joke are they about to drop on us, but it never came. What yeah, they love Colonel Hummer jokes in this. Someone in there does, for sure, which I think is just makes it that much funnier. But I, I took a note of it just because it was something I was not expecting. <clears throat> and then also, uh, there was a new DED here at the end to really show that the previous arc is over and that uh, we have a new one, which is, I think, Kaseki, which is the new one. Um, which I ended up liking. It ended up giving a different mood to compared to the previous one, but I, I ended up liking the ED, this ED. So yeah, I thought it was another. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, it definitely grows on. It grew on me as I kind of went through it, especially because it's hard to go. It's hard to kind of like be better than the previous one after how much has been built up because of the Benizakura arc. But I think it was perfectly good for one that has to kind of follow up that one. So it's definitely going to be one that I'm going to get more into, it. and I also kind of like the starting beat to it as well. So yeah, uh, another good episode for me. How'd you feel about it, Zen? It was good. I liked it. It was kind of, I mean, yeah, it was kind of, eh, you know, mm. I can only, uh, I can only handle so many, uh, like ass jokes there before I run out of, ass. of ass tolerance. Um, but it was pretty good. Yeah. There was suppositories. There was literally ass things related to this. There was a lot of butt stuff. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. That was episode 63. Let's go on to episode 64, which is, I don't know how to pronounce this word. Nim Nimbo is surprisingly filling. Nimbo? 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 Looks like Nimbo. A-I-B-O? Nimbo? Oh, actually, Mambo. They they have it phonetically. Nimbo. Let's go with that. <laughs> Zen, tell us what yeah. the episode's about. <laughs> So this is an exclusive Nimbo. interview for Katsura, where uh, they are trying to see what the day a day in the life of a patriot for the anti-foreigner faction is like. Um, and it pretty much just follows him from point A to point B the whole time. He's like all the different times he's being like chased by the Shinsengumi. Um, and he keeps like going through his different things. He goes to a meeting with all of his compatriots and it turns out they just talk about like pop culture. Like they just hang out. They don't really do anything. Um, about the new Otsu single. Yeah. And then uh, every time they go anywhere, they get attacked by the Shinsengumi. So like there's another one and there he goes and he's like, we have to now go have a meeting with someone very important. And she's like, oh my god, who? And he's like, uh, someone will never survive without, and it's just Gintoki. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and he's uh, trying to recruit Gintoki into the fold here, and Gintoki's not having it. Um, he ends up kicking Katsura through a door. 
and no, then he, he um, kicks the door into Katsura, and he gets that's his right. Head he stuck kicks in. the door into Katsura's head, um, which makes a really good gag when she says later <laughs> when the Shinsengumi show up to destroy to start shooting at him. She's like, "You need to get out of here." He's like, "No, well, if I put my head away from this, there's going to be a hole, and Toki's going to be mad with me." <laughs> Yeah, he says, don't pull me out or there'll be a hole and Kentucky will be angry at me. Um, but they get away again and they're on like a uh, fucking like the Eiffel Tower. And she's like, what's happening? And he's like, we're, we're filming an action scene that's better than Jackie because he's talking about being better than Jackie Chan. Um, yeah, he starts talking about being better than Jackie Chan. Yeah. And so they get blasted by this giant laser from the Shinsengumi and they're falling. And uh, Katsura hurls the interviewer back to safety. And um, he ends up, uh, Elizabeth is falling with him, and she turns into another Elizabeth sized parachute with Elizabeth's <laughs> face on it. Um, and then, uh, as the, he's, uh, she is caught by the Shinsengumi after he gets away. And they're like, we're going to question you because, you know, Katsura. And then this letter that he said was supposed to be a childhood letter from a friend of his that he wrote himself to fake it for the news uh, <laughs> falls out of her sleeve. And they read it. And it's actually him giving like this poetic speech about how even though the Shinsengumi and him are enemies, they're both people who want the best for Edo. And he believes in their spirit and their soul and stuff like that. Um, and she's really touched by it. But then there's a PS at the bottom of the letter, and there's a bomb in the letter. <laughs> it says, PS, all Shins and Gumi should die. Uh, and then it turns out that she gets caught in the blast, and she's, like, horrifically injured. Yep, which is pretty good. It, it, it ends with her basically talking shit on him live on TV. Yeah, she's, like, telling him, like, how to look out for him to get him arrested. Which is pretty a good call, a call off from the beginning where they are so hard trying to make sure that no one <laughs> was able to catch him at all. Um, <clears throat> so this episode, I have the, the notes here. Um, I ended up really liking this episode. I think it's because Katsura and Elizabeth end up being one of if it, if it's not the main Gintoki crew, then the one that the one dudes that I'm willing to see anything with are these two <laughs> are these two pair for some reason. Yes, I I think Katsura might be my favorite character. I fucking love Katsura. I was meaning to say we should do it some. I've probably for next episode we can do it. But now that we've seen our first arc, we should do a uh, our top five character things, not just for the time being. Based on you know how Sean Jump does the popularity polls, we should do one yeah. for us here and then see how it changes as we do like the next uh, the next. Uh, I guess at this point it would be the next sixty five episodes. Yeah, <laughs> see how it goes. Katsura would definitely be high up there for me. I think he's really funny and good in general. Uh, I also like that the ending gag from the previous um, <laughs> from the previous episode, they talk about how his hair's not short. He goes like, how come his hair's not short? I hear he's wearing hair plugins. <laughs> yeah, they're like, his hair's gr growing back suspiciously fast. <laughs> it's like he's obviously wearing plugins, which I thought was funny. Um, but yeah, we'll probably do something like that for next week. But yeah, I like the at any episode that focuses around them, them too. I think it ends up working pretty good. Uh, for the beginning here, I really liked how secretive they were about how they didn't want to show his face at all. They censor everything, including the wanted posters, which in theory would just be drawings of them. <laughs> so why are they censoring a poster? Yeah. That <laughs> also, it's, I like when he's got the fake nose and mustache on and then he just takes it off because he wants to eat yeah he's like how, how am i supposed and to eat ramen with this? yes yeah and he's like i'm the master of disguise <laughs> no one can see through my disguise and then later on in the episode she goes like uh how come you're up on the roof because i'm too well known i'm too popular if i go down there they'll know and then she goes like so you're not the master of the skies <laughs> they'll they'll know you immediately <laughs> And then he completely ignores her, her, her statement about how, like, if you're the master of the skies, how the hell are these people able to recognize you? And he just, like, moves on from it completely. Um, but I also like the gag where they start using his fake name. And then immediately he does the, uh, I'm not this, I'm Katsura. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she goes like, oh, wait, 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 we're not supposed to. It was like, it's okay, just add a beep at the end. 
He's like, well, don't. But then he starts being angry at them. He's like, don't use the beep. That just sounds wrong. That sounds. <laughs> that sounds uncultured. Yeah, he keeps like correcting her too. What is it that she says that he gets mad at? And he's like, women shouldn't say that. I think it was something about like shaking it. There's like so many specific things where he's just taking it the wrong way, where he assumes she says something like it's it's out in the open, and he goes, women should not say things are out in the open. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Every time she says it, he, like, corrects her. It's really fucking funny. It is funny, but I, I like that. Um, I liked how it seemed like he was just, like, it was very, he, by the end of it, he makes it very clear that he sees this as a propaganda piece, which is why he's acting, like, so weird throughout the entirety of it and so planned out for everything. Like, when he's go up on top of the boards and he starts calling out to construction workers saying, like, no, they're also part of the anti-foreigner um, league. And he starts calling to them, like, hey, and then they completely ignore Yeah, him. and they're, <laughs> they ignore him. And then later on, uh, when he comes, comes back, he yells at them saying, Run! The Shishangumi are coming! And he's like, that's clearly not the person you're thinking. But the the reason that he thinks he's ignoring them is like, I heard, you know, maybe they had another fight with the wife. He's like, I just don't yeah, think that Yeah, he's like, oh, probably had a fight with his wife again. So he's not doing so great. <laughs> he's like, no, I think it's clearly just a construction worker. <laughs> he's not an anti foreigner or anything. Um, I liked it when they were in the um, in the shop, and we got to see uh, the lady again, the the one from the previous episode, the one that makes it so. Uh, what was her name? Uh, the one that uh, hides him when he's injured. Yes, her. Mm-hmm. I can't find the name right here, but you know who we're talking about. There's so many characters in Gintoki that it's hard in Gintoki in Gintama, so it's sometimes <laughs> it's a little bit hard to keep track of all of them. But I like it's hard to even remember the show's name. <laughs> Yes, so many. Um, but I liked that they were back in there and that she's she was there. I thought that was fun. And then I also liked that she gets immediately angry at the Shishingumi for fucking throwing rockets at her business. Yeah, <laughs> firing rockets into the place. Mm-hmm. Also, when Liz's entrance where Elizabeth has been, like, stabbed and she goes crashing into the place and they shoot a rocket at her and then she wakes up and, like, fucking, like... Street Fighter 3 counter parries that shit right back at them. <laughs> yeah. There's a really good one later, too, when the Shinsengumi attack them uh, at Gintoki's place, and she does, like, a charged-up punch that yeah. launches a bunch of them off the deck. Which is really good. I thought that was really funny. And in general, I always... I don't know if you... I don't know if I've talked to you about this, but in my mind, I'm constantly thinking about the act of kicking back a missile. Like, if there was anything I would want, if we could get the Mythbuster crew back together, I would need to know, is it physically possible for someone to kick back a missile? It's the one thing I've always thought about. Because uh, I think it would be, one, very cool to see a person in real life kick back a missile. But I also feel like the sec I've talked to friends about this where I'm like, do you think this is possible? Here's my logic. If you hit it at the exact right angle with the exact right thing, do you think it could happen? And then my friend's response was always... No, it will blow up the second you touch it. <laughs> so, I like that they that Elizabeth was able to do the kick. <laughs> I got a real good kick out of it, funny enough. Um, yeah, and then when they're the hidden and then they're talking about the secret thing, he tries to hide the fact that they're talking about pop culture by saying that there's a secret code to everything that yeah, they're saying. Yeah, he says all of our discussions are coded. Yeah, and then he starts going off about how he thinks Goemon is actually very good and shows a society at large. Um, yeah, he's like, uh, he's a great example of the corruption of modern Hollywood. He's refreshing. <laughs> and then the Shishingumi attack immediately. And then they also reveal, like, I can't actually talk to them for very long because anytime I show up, the Shishingumi immediately attack. And she's like, you're so bad at this. Like, they're obviously trailing you. You don't. Yeah, they're, they're just following you here. Which is really, again, really funny. And I did like the ending bit as well, where he's kind of up on top of, like, this fake Eiffel Tower. And then he says that when they shoot the the laser at him, and he's like, I'll be able to dodge it because I'm just too cool. And then he immediately gets <laughs> blocked by it. Yeah, he goes, um, I'm the unstoppable. They'll just miss. They'll just miss. And then he immediately gets hit, <laughs> which is really good. <laughs> Uh, there's this constant thing about, like, as long as you're, uh, if you're gonna be, like, hiding away from the Shinshingumi, you need a tasty stick. And they take this tasty stick as, like, the most serious thing in the world, because he reveals, tasty stick, this flavor, and then she goes, ah, 
that's a very good flavor. I like that flavor too. It's like the one thing that's bad is that I hold on to one for too long and they turn into dust. And then you find out later that he uses those <laughs> tasty sticks specifically for that reason. And he uses them as smoke screens <laughs> to go away from everyone. Mm-hmm. Also, I like how he says he's got the trump card to convince Gintoki to join him. And it's the chocolate tasty sticks. But yeah. Kagura just steals them all and leaves. Yeah, he's like, some girl just took away your trump card. <laughs> and he goes, oh. <laughs> I also think it was really funny that he's like so much like, no, obviously Gintoki is going to be the one who's going to save this revolution. He's going to help us all. Just wait. I also thought it was funny that Gintoki really likes this reporter, as mentioned in previous episodes. And I thought like, oh, was he going to freak out when he sees her? But they actually do the smart thing. He never actually sees that she's there because he never opens the door fully and he never sees that he's there. And she just kind of. Yeah, ignored. she's I- always blocked by the door on yeah. Katsura's head. So I thought that was actually a pretty good, like, touch of, like, well, obviously, because he likes her, he would freak out a little bit, but he never actually sees her. I thought that was a nice little touch. Um, I also like that the way they got Katsura off of that door is that they suplex him off. <laughs> she just is fed up with his shit by that point. Yeah, she grabs him and slams him into the railing of the of the business. Yeah, which was really good. Uh, also, I really I'll- like how the cameraman is into it. Yes, the, the whole time is... she's like, "This is stupid," but the cameraman's like, "Yeah, I got the shot. Yeah, <laughs> I, I got, got it." Sh- got <laughs> did you get that jump? <laughs> he's like, "Yes, I did." <laughs> he's so into- yeah, he's like super into it. It's fucking good. So good. So yeah, this episode. This one was the favorite of the ones I've watched. I think this one was really good <laughs> because it yeah, was- this was my favorite of the night too. It was, it's really funny. Yeah, I really like this. Like. Roadrunner Wily Coyote relationship between Katsura and the Shishin Gumi, where it really feels like the Shishin Gumi should be able to stop Katsura because he is so terrible at absolutely everything he does in terms of hiding. He's always out in the open. He always openly declares he's Katsura. He's out here literally flaunting at them and they're unable to stop him because he always has a one up on him and he even comically sh- hits them with a bomb at the end. <laughs> like the yep. only thing. The only thing that was missing from this episode is him going meep meep, and it would have been the perfect Looney Tunes ending. And, like, I like how he gives, like, this big speech later where he's on the Elizabeth parachute, and he's like, as long as, uh, as long as you're prepared, you've never got anything to fear. And she's like, wow, he's great. Like, right before he fucking blows her up with the bomb. Yeah, it's so good how he wins her over in that last bit there when he says, tell him what the anti-foreigners are actually like, and he throws her to safety. Um, and they <laughs> it really feels like it's going to end in a heartwarming thing because the letter inside is talking about, like, please leave her alone. Like, it's so... Like, he planned out everything except for the fact that she would still be there. <laughs> I mean, that was the one thing he overlooked is that, oh, yeah, this girl that he wants him to leave him alone is actually going to be the blast radius. Yeah, it's going to be next to the bomb. She's, like, in a wheelchair with all of her limbs bandaged up. Yeah, she has, like, a catheter, I think. It's, like, really bad for her. (laughs) So, yeah, this episode ended up being great. Um, Loved it. Real funny throughout it all. And then also it returned the Go-Go 13 joke, which is always funny to me. when Whenever Elizabeth Elizabeth turns into the the Go-Go 13 guy. (laughs) Yeah, the Dick Togo, I think his name is. Or something Togo. It's also really good in this one because it it only showed the back of the head, and I was like, "Oh, it's the it's the GoGo Thirteenth thing again." But it took a while for them to actually show the face, which was a, a good payoff there. But yeah, how'd you feel about it? It was good. It was really good. I like everything Katsura basically. Hey, Gintoki, or like I, now I did it. Gintama's yep. a really hit or miss show with the jokes for me. Like sometimes they're really funny, sometimes I don't find them very funny. Mm-hmm. But everything Katsura does, I find funny. So, this was an excellent episode for me. Elizabeth was really good in this one. Yeah. And I usually find Elizabeth funny, too. Um, yeah, that, it's amazing how, from that worst episode, we really thought Elizabeth was going to be super annoying, but they've actually found the perfect balance <laughs> with, with her now. Yes, Elizabeth's very funny now. Yeah. Um, yeah, really good episode. I also like the uh, the part where... <laughs> Right before it cuts to like the actual commercial break for the episode, he turns around to the camera and he's like, "Don't change that channel," <laughs> and it like gives him the highlight stuff. <laughs> yeah, that was really good. That was some good stuff right there. Uh, let's see. Next episode, then let's move on to episode sixty-five, 
which is youngsters learn the value of life from rhinoceros beetles. Also, this was a Jampudi hero um, event thingy. Remember the, the rhinoceros beetles? Yes, where you have yeah. to collect the rhinoceros beetles. Yes, that's why I was like, oh, I remember this one. It's from <laughs> Jampudi Heroes. Yeah, and you get enough rhinoceros beetles in the event to trade in for like the golden one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so very nice. Tell us what it's about, Zen. Uh, Kagura is, like, with a bunch of neighborhood kids, because sometimes she hangs out with the neighborhood kids, and they're having beetle wrestling matches, and Kagura says that she wants to participate, but, um, hers is a dung beetle, not, like, a rhinoceros beetle. Um, Okita then jumps down and is like, there's no one left in my squad who can beat my beetle, so let me play with you all, and his beetle kills them all. Um. Kagura ends up burying the her her dung beetle, and it, it makes it sound like Okita's beetle killed it, but actually she did because she got too excited and she squished it. This might be one of my favorite cold openings, by the way. That fucking that 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 transition into the grave was so fucking. Funny. Yeah, but then she's just crying over its grave. Yeah. Um. She's annoying it. Gin and Shimpachi to go with her to catch beetles and they don't want to go, but then they see an ad on TV that says that there's a beetle out there that's worth as much as a car, so they decide they're going to go look anyway. Um, as they're looking through the forest, they keep finding various members of the Shinsengumi doing stupid shit in the woods. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, they do when you describe it like that, but yeah, they are just doing that. Uh... What is that? Are you there? Uh oh. Hello. Zan. Okay, let me pause real quick. Uh the power went out for Zen, so we'll be right back. And and we're back. Zen is back with his power. So Welcome My back, power Zen. is restored. Yeah, don't know what happened there. I'm gonna assume it was the Shinsengumi actually attacking you for saying they were just out of the forest doing stupid shit. Because you you cut yeah. off perfectly at that point. That that is in fact what they were doing. They were just like out in the forest doing shit, and every time they uh, try to walk away without thinking of what they're doing, and then it turns out they're hunting for uh, the shogun's pet beetle, which has escaped, I guess. Um, and they're trying to get the odd jobs crew to leave so they don't have to worry about them fucking it up. So they do a bunch of random different stuff, and they try to like one up each other. Finally, they find the beetle, um, and Kagura ends up getting it after they like fight for it. Uh, Gintoki makes a deal with them to get the beetle back since Kagura has it, so he can get money from it. Um, Okita challenges her to a beetle match, or she challenges Okita, and Okita accepts uh, a beetle wrestling match. And uh, Toshiro's like, "Wait." I think this is a calculated good move here because if if Okita's beetle wins, we can just take the other one for free. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. And then he brings out like a fucking giant monster beetle <laughs> and they realize that he's just going to kill it. Uh, so they launch Gintoki up there to defeat the giant beetle, which he does. Um, and then he's lecturing them about how you have to be careful and you can't like toy with creatures' lives and stuff. It's it's serious, and like you have to treat them with dignity. And then he steps on the golden beetle and kills it. Um, and then it cuts to uh, Hichikata and Kondo with the police chief. Um, and the police chief tells them to commit seppuku because they couldn't save the, the beetle. Yeah, he also shows up with Kondo as the beetle, saying that the beetle had evolved. <laughs> <clears throat> So, this episode is very silly. <laughs> There's a lot of silly gags in here. Um, but I ended up liking it overall. I like that opening bit where she's talking about where they they show... They have, like, this 3D battle between rhinoceros beetles. This is also something that's completely lost on us. Because us in America, we don't do this. This is a very much a Japanese thing, rhinoceros battles. Yes, beetle wrestling. Yeah. yeah. It's a Japanese thing, which I've come to understand it from playing the Yakuza games... 
where they have an entire beetle wrestling thing, but also the fact that Pokemon comes from catching bugs. It's apparently a, it was apparently a very big thing in Japan. I don't know if it still is because you know again, we're in America. Um, but I at least knew from the intro. I thought the intro was funny with like the 3D beetles fighting each other. <laughs> like it's super. Um, yeah, all the beetles except for the giant one at the end are rendered in 3D. Yeah, which is pretty good. I, I you know, do you think it's the re- the same reason that uh, they refuse to do cell? <laughs> they ever do cell is because doing a beetle normally actually takes a lot of time to animate, so it's actually just easier to do it in 3D. Maybe. Hmm. Something to think about. Maybe the beetle itself is just the the wor- an animator's nightmare. Um, but I also like, I like the reveal that she had a dung beetle. It was like the wrong type of beetle. And all the kids start saying like the true adventurous part here is how you just picked up some shit <laughs> and put it in your hands. <laughs> Cause it's a big ball of shit that this beetle has. Yeah. It's like massive. And the reveal is, um, she's like, yeah, I've been feeding it different stuff too. And it's just <laughs> a giant ball of shit. She calls and then it. She's like, yeah, isn't that great? Look how self-sufficient it is. <laughs> <laughs> very that's a very good joke about a, an animal that eats shit. <laughs> um but yeah i liked okita showing up before they reveal why he's there because i was like okay i guess okita's just like fucking with children <laughs> i guess i'll just accept that as a character trait of something he would do uh but then it is later revealed why he's doing it but i like that uh very quick shot after he challenges them to the grave site for sadaharu 28 which she later forgets which number it is as she's trying to find a new one <laughs> I think she calls it um, 25 before she quickly realizes that it was actually number 28. I also like, uh, this was a gag from an old one where um, Okita called things Sadamaru, which is very close to Sadaharu. Um, I don't remember why he called, do you remember the specific animal from way back? It's I remember the joke, but I don't remember why he wanted to call something uh, Sadamaru. I do not. Hmm. I remembered enough to know it was a callback. I don't remember. If you remember, you feel free to leave it down below so we can talk about it. Um, but yeah. Oh, shit, where was I? Yes. No. Yes. No, I remember. So, yeah, I like that opening bit a whole bunch, uh, especially with her crying because it looked like she was generally heartbroken over this beetle being killed. And then also the reveal that she was the reason behind it, <laughs> that she got too excited from watching the rhinoceros beetles fighting each other. That she and then basically... she blames him because who whose fault is it that someone got me excited? <laughs> <laughs> and Kentucky very quickly says, like, it's your fault, <laughs> and he smacks her in the head. <laughs> Which is right on that one. Um, I like that beginning bit where he's clearly not paying attention to anything she's saying at all. And just kind of going along with it until it's revealed that you can actually get a lot of money from beetles. And then he's like, okay, yeah, sure, let's go looking for beetles. I like when they find um, Kondo in the woods and he's just like standing in honey. And they immediately are like, I don't even know what that is. Let's just move on. And then he's like, uh, maybe it's like some kind of, I think it was, a, maybe it's a fairy, something like that. It's like, it looked like gorilla, meaning it looked, it was Kondo. And he goes like, oh, of course, it's a gorilla fairy out there to protect the gorillas. Yeah, of the, the fairy of gorillas protecting all the gorillas. <laughs> yeah. And then when they find Hijikata and he's putting mayonnaise on trees and he's just like, ah, some kind of mayonnaise fairy of the forest <laughs> out there protecting the mayonnaise. No, I'm pretty sure it's like a smoking one or something. <laughs> And then I think this is the gag where they talk about, like, he's the nicotine fairy. He protects the cigarettes. And then this is where uh-huh. there was a note where it says, the way he's saying this is a homonym for smiling penis. Which I took a note here and said, I've learned that the Japanese language, almost any word they say can be interpreted as penis. Yeah, it seems to be the case. Very easy thing to do in this language. I think it's a beautiful thing, honestly. Um, but yeah, I liked the Shinshingumi fucking with them, like, by releasing a whole bunch of mosquitoes on them to get them to leave, uh, and the way that they keep hitting each other over the mosquitoes, like, they keep punching Shinpachi in the face, trying to, by, by, but by saying, like, hey, it's actually mosquitoes doing it, and then when a mosquito goes near, it doesn't even go near any one of the three, it goes in the middle of the pot, and they all start freaking, <laughs> he immediately goes to punch him, I think he goes to punch Gintoki, Gintoki goes to punch Kagura, and Kagura punches Shinpachi, 
And they're just like, uh-huh. you were clearly just waiting for the right moment. He's like, I spent enough time with you. I knew this was happening, so I decided to act first. <laughs> that was I good. I also like the bit where they have, they're have they all hungry, and uh, Cockroach just goes over because they're like cooking barbecue. Like, oh, look how much food we have. And she just goes and vomits in the grill. <laughs> Yeah, she does a great vomit, and then she has like an intense stare down with Okita, who's the only one who isn't intimidated by her throw up, and the ter- the terrible smell it leaves behind. It was very graphic, but I thought it was very good. Um, <clears throat> obviously, the bit where they start when they learn that it's actually the Shogunites, which is the thing they wanted to avoid in general, is that it, the second they learned it, they knew that the Odd Jobs crew was going to ask for a lot of money for it, because <laughs> that's just who they are. <laughs> And the second they learn that that the beetle is from the Shogun, they're like, oh, yes, 60% sounds good, right? Mm, For the Shogunite's big pet, of course, let's do it. Uh, And of course, the reveal, I I forget if it's before this, but they start doing this thing where they start saying Kabuto before they do every attack. Like Kabuto dive, Kabuto hit, and then like... That's when they're trying to catch the gold beetle. Yeah, I like that, but... Maybe because it reminded me that Kabuto means uh, beetle. <laughs> and it reminded me of Kabuto from uh, Naruto. I was like, oh yeah, that's why he's named that. Makes perfect sense now. Um, Yeah, and it was a very enjoyable episode for me. It was good stuff. I like it when Okita and Kagura start fighting with each other. Because they somehow are like the... Oh, they're like the... What's the... Hmm... I don't know, they play off each other very well. So whenever they're next to each other, they seem to have like this... They, their like manic energy goes into each other and it ends up creating situations that are amazing. Like at the, like at the school, when at the, at the festival, when they realized that the spirit of the festival was being ruined and they just completely destroyed everything there. I feel like something similar to that. And I like it whenever they're together. There is also a bit where Okita is also dressed up as a beetle, which I thought was pretty funny when he's on the floor for a very good long bit before someone picks up. Yeah, up. they're like, oh my God, a giant beetle. And they kick him out of a tree and then he can't get up because he's stuck in the beetle costume. Yeah, and he's like, a little help here. And they all just ignore him. <laughs> they don't go for it immediately, which I thought it was good. So yeah, pretty good episode, I'd say. How'd you feel about it? Pretty good, pretty good. It was not the best episode of the night. It wasn't the worst episode of the night. It was just kind of there. Yeah. Um, it was, you know, in an episode. Yeah. Nothing mm-hmm. totally stood out to me as really great. Um, it was pretty funny when uh, the giant-ass beetle came out and it played, like, the stat card. It gave it, like, an <laughs> HP pool and, like, it, its level and everything. I thought that yeah. was pretty funny. Yeah, they gave it, like, a Digimon reveal. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and when it's fighting and it shoots like beams out of its eyes that's right <laughs> the, the couple yeah beams. it shoots laser beams out of its eyes while Okita's riding it yeah um, that was pretty funny and like Kagura's like uh, staring at that giant thing and everyone's like don't don't fight that just give up and she's <laughs> like no a fight is about your spirit not the size of your body <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good yeah, very enjoyable. Not the not the most enjoyable of the ones we watched, but still pretty good. So that's the episodes for this bit. We're back here. It's v- it feels very weird after the previous arc to go back to these style, but I kind of expected that. Um, but we're gonna get back into it. We're we're ready to move on to the next thing. As I mentioned before, it looks like the next set. I don't remember. I actually mentioned in the beginning of the episode. So let's talk about what we're gonna be watching for next time. So next week, as I look for the episode list, we should be doing episodes 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, and 71. Um, Because there's a tiny little arc in the end of the episode arc is 71, so we will be doing those episodes for next time. Then the following week after that, we'll be doing 72, 73, 74, and 75. And then after that one is another big arc where it's multiple episodes, and we will be doing 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, and 81. That one's called the Yagyu arc. So that's kind of how we're going to go forward. But for next week, we should be covering episodes 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, and 71. 
Remember that for next week, everyone. If you're keeping in keeping track of us, just because I realize now that we have to pay attention a little bit about how certain arcs are placed, I think it's uh, best for the enjoyment of it stuff that we kind of keep track of it. So pay close attention to that. But that's it for this week, everyone. Good to be talking again about Gintama. We missed a week. It actually felt a little bit weird having a week off and not talking about anime with you, Zen. <laughs> it actually did feel a little bit weird. <laughs> Yeah, it is a little weird, isn't it? But we're yeah. back in. Yeah, we're back into it. We thank you very much for waiting. As always, comment down below. Tell us how you felt about these specific episodes, about stuff that's coming up, about anything in general that you want to talk about. Feel free to comment down below about how you feel about the episodes or anything in general. We're all good. I'll We read stuff. Thank you very much. And that is it for this episode. We thank you very much. I had an ending bit fuck and then i forgot it because i took a week break off god damn it we will be we will be back <laughs> next week when i will remember the stupid ending i can't believe i took one fucking week off and i forgot it god damn it you had one job i have one job i duh it was so good too god damn it. i have to look back I, it's gonna be a mess because the Yu-Gi-Oh gx episode i, like is gonna I end don't here. remember what it is but you remember that it was good yes i'm so angry at myself because the only way I'm, I'm very dumb bird brained about it where i'm like if i remember to do something then it will stick with me but if i stay off track for a little bit it's like i completely fall apart as a person i'm like a robot like, the robot has to follow the AI pattern. You know how, like, a GTA dude will have to walk forward, and if you, like, slightly nudge them, they, they then they don't know what to do next. That's how I am as a person. <laughs> but thank you very much, everyone, for watching. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs> so goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>